we have made it to our first keynote on Community is the Business with Rosie Sherry, a talk sponsored by Gradual. Rosie is a force in the community profession, adding value and impact wherever her presence is found. Rosie, that's from me. Officially, Rosie is the founder, community builder, advisor, and coach at Rosieland and Independent. Allow Rosie to regale you with how and why community is actually woven into every decision we make in business. Rosie, it's all you. Hello. Am I all good? Okay. I'm not sure how to do the slides, but we'll see how it goes. Right. Okay, so I'm, today I'm going to talk about um, community is the business. And really this comes, comes down to thinking back to, to my personal experiences as a founder and also as a community builder. So um, when, I, when I look back at my experience, like community has always been at the heart of everything I do. And to some extent, I've had the luxury, the benefit, the, the graft, what the hustle or the rustle, you might call it, um, to be able to explore how to build community, but also how to build businesses. So fundamentally, for the past 15 years or so, I've been building businesses, but community ha has just been right here at the heart of everything I do is I think of the people first and then I guess come come the pandemic and um, I guess the, the whole community-led kind of um, vibe the, the the hype almost um, we, we all wanted to do community um, I think everyone in the room here wanted to, to wanted to build their work the companies they work for their businesses with community at the heart but it's actually really, really difficult to do. It was like we shout out community led, but um, the reality is it's hard. It's hard because community is essentially part of the culture of a business. And if we're coming in as community builders, um, it's, it's hard to build that culture in and, and, and change the way people do or build businesses. Um, so, so to expect us to truly be community-led is perhaps, um, <laughs> you know, an impossible ask maybe, or maybe not quite impossible, but I think we kind of have to recognize that being community-led is um, harder than, than we've made it out to be or harder than, the, you know, the, the startup tech world has made it out to be. And I feel like, you know, we've, we felt the impact of this um, in the past year, especially. Obviously, not just the community world, but the tech world and and the world at large as well. But particularly, like the last year, it's it's kind of felt like it's community led until the going gets tough, or community led until until it feels hard, or until we change our mind, or until the next big thing comes up. And so, you know, I, I put the question out there um, on LinkedIn, um, as, as was mentioned. On LinkedIn, there's a good, good bunch of community people. And I, can, I kind of asked, you know, out of curiosity, why have community-led um, efforts kind of not worked out? Why, what, what, what's been messed up around it? And, you know, there's, there's a whole sort there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. And, and I don't think any of this will really surprise anyone in the room. Um, Gareth Wilson says bad hires. So, you know, it, it kind of feels obvious if you hire the wrong people who don't get community, it's, it's not going to go well. Um, return on investment or measurement and metrics is, is another um, problem that 
makes it hard to truly build community if there's such a focus on on all the measurements. Um, it just uh, talks about looking good over doing good, um, creating value. There's like so much emphasis on creating value that we kind of forget. Like, are we creating value or are we creating community? Are they different things? Um, and you know, for people who know me, I, I like to you know be a bit. Um, oh, I guess have a bit of fun around marketing, but when there's a hype, people jump on the hype. And part of community-led has been a bit of a hype effort. It has been marketing. And Yuri quite rightly so points out what, you know, all, were all these companies actually community-led? And many of them weren't. Um, but this last comment from Regina is, is actually pretty uh, interesting because like, just putting it here at the end is like, well, where do we even start with all the problems of how we can't get community led right? There's a whole list of problems that it's uh, it's hard to kind of pinpoint one thing. And if there's so many problems, um, <laughs> you know, what, what luck do we have um, on truly becoming more community led? So really, this, this talk is a bit of an exploration on how to think about being community-led, um, how to perhaps take out the business um, focus, um, or how to, how to balance things a bit better. I, I don't think we've necessarily done it wrong, but I think, or I'm hoping that just looking at things from a different angle will help. So the angle that I'm, I'm coming in at is there's a difference between um, the business of community and community is the business. And maybe I'm being pedantic. Maybe it's such a small difference in wording. Um, maybe I'm just making stuff up. But for me, the, the difference is, is that when we talk about the business of community, we're putting the business needs first and we forget about the, the real essence of community. We get carried away with what community could be. We get excited with um, people or companies that do succeed. And we take our, our business needs and we try to inject communi community into that. Whereas if we take community as the business, that's kind of starting with community needs first, serving your people, working with them and building the relationships and trust, and then building uh, kind of your business around that. So business of community is not the same as community is the business. And this still melts my brain a bit, so bear with me. So the business of community, when we put the business first, um, we tend to see things like uh, community happens over there. It's that, it's that forum, it's that project. Um, we tend to hyper-focus on return on investment and engagement. Um, we tend to see like people must serve the business, even though we might be helping the people serve the business, ultimately it's, it's the people serving the business. And, the balance is often off. Um, and really, it comes down to like um, community it ends up being optional. It ends up being something we can kind of stop investing in. Where, whereas if we focus, if we look at it from the community as a business angle, um, it's, it's more focused around the, 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 the decisions the business makes is what actually makes community. Community is not something over there. Community is everything we do. It's how we talk to our people. It's how we listen and care and notice um, if people are troubled or, or what their real needs are. Um, it's it's the boundaries that we, we design and stick to and are clear on them internally and externally. And there's never, or there should never really be a question whether you invest back into the community and the ecosystem it's, we understand that this is what makes community. 
And then if we go back to the business of community angle, when when businesses look at it like with a business first mindset, we, we come up with situations like communities need to be self-sustaining. And, and actually, if you if you think about that, that's like a pretty um, unfair request to put onto us as community builders. There's no other department within businesses where um, the CEO might demand that. It's like, is marketing self-sustaining? No, it's not. It requires consistent um, care and investment. You can't just cut marketing down to one or two people and expect it to continue. But then if we look at the community as a business angle, we understand that community is at the center. It is. It does touch all parts of the business. And if we were then to remove that from our efforts, it would leave a big, a big hole in our in our business or in our community. Another angle to look at is thinking about the the models that we we often create, um, and how those are often created with the business in mind. So for this presentation, I was looking at the commitment curve, which is quite a popular uh, community model. Nothing wrong with it, absolutely nothing wrong with it. And, but when I looked at it, it felt like a very business of community model. It, it, it came from the angle of the business. It's like the business kind of, even though they would be working with the members to design something that works, it's a business driving it forward. But what 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 if we had a model like that that was flipped into community is the business from that kind of angle? And that might end up being like a company commitment curve. How can we design a commitment curve for the company to invest into the community, to invest into the ecosystem? What would that start to look like? If we committed, if we were committed as a company um, to do that, um, so I just drew up this one quickly. Is that I think companies should always be investing in listening, empowering, elevating, and investing back into the people and the ecosystem. The same goes for these two models. Um, it's a member contribution model in the form of concentric circles. There's a few of these going around. Um, again, perfectly valid model, um, but also quite similar to the um, previous commitment curve model, where it's focused on, on the people and how to guide them through for the benefit of the business. Ultimately, the goal is to serve the business. But if we take a community as a business angle, um, what should the company contributions look like? How can the company contribute back into the, the community, into the ecosystem? And how can we start mapping that out? Um, so I still don't have a clear picture on this. I'm not pretending I do, but my visual is, well, a company should be going out there and serving the community wherever they may be. Community is everywhere. So community as a business understands that business decisions are potentially community decisions. And this is uh, really kind of where um, it stands out. Um, I'm using the example of Reddit, which happened earlier, earlier this year, the Reddit blackouts, where there were pricing changes for the API, which um, caused lots of problems for, for people. Um, and the community decided to, to protest in the form of uh, blackouts, as in shutting, shutting down the communities or restricting access to them. Um, it, was, it was quite amazing to watch. <laughs> um, and Spares is the CEO of, of Reddit, um, and he kind of deserves a special award, not a good award, um, for the, the, the community members um, pulling this together on Reddit, one pixel at a time. 
they created this image. And fundamentally, the API changes was a business decision, but it was also a community decision, right? Um, and we can we can look at Reddit and say, oh, that's not going to happen everywhere. But actually, I see I do see this happening in a lot of businesses on a smaller scale, where the company grows as a result of the community. And then along the way, they, they lose the community vibes. They stop investing in the community. They start annoying members. The members just end up leaving. Might not be blackouts, but they definitely stop. Um, the members stop coming back. They, they don't feel appreciated or valued or invested back into. So what can we do about it? Um, I have a few general thoughts. I don't really offer any answers, but... Um, my, my current thoughts of the day are that um, there should be a community executive officer um, in every business. And this, I, you know, I, I take, I use this title for myself, but I'm not literal in the sense of this title. It's more a case of there needs to be someone up at the top who gets community and understands the decisions that the business makes and how that might impact the community. Um, this could be a community uh, chief community officer as well. The title doesn't really matter, but the the key part of it is someone who understands the balance of there's the needs of the business and there's the needs of the community. Um, another thing that we should think about is Every business decision needs to consider the impact of the people and the business. Um, a while back, I created this uh, input-output community funnel. And the reason I did this was because um, I wanted to communicate a way of, 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 of kind of showing that as community builders, we need to understand what our inputs are into into the community. So this could be the conversations we have, um, the projects we, we run, anything that we that we need to run run the community and all the work that is required to get us there. And we need to understand the outputs of those, not necessarily to focus on the business angle, but for us to become more aware of of the value we're creating and to make sure that we're we're not wasting anyone's time and when we're, we're hopefully not wasting the business's budget to be community led means instead of roi speak we focus on business decisions that make sense i kind of gave up recently <laughs> even trying to calculate or measure community the value of community and I, I was trying to think about what would make sense instead. And um, in my instance, it felt like, well, I want to make good community decisions that make good business sense. And as long as I'm doing that, I feel like there's value in the community work that we're doing. When community is a business, it means that understanding the community flywheels and what may have positive or negative impacts. So this is like so important, but also so easily forgotten. When communities emerge, when they grow, they start really, really simple. They start with simple conversations going back and forth. Then you might start a group, and then you might have a website, then you might have an email list. And all these things, as they grow, become, they are like flywheels. And a lot of them are small flywheels within larger flywheels. But it's all one kind of really big flywheel. And it's so easy to kind of start cost cutting or start looking on places to, to pull back. And I've, I've, seen, I've seen this time and time again where companies... You know, they're tempted to like pull things out. 
Um, but the re you know, when you start pulling things out without understanding how those that impacts the rest of the community, how that impacts the business, how reducing, uh, for example, like a, a community newsletter, like if it's weekly, if you reduce that down to once a month, that could have a real impact on the traction of the community. And when things sl start slowing down, you, you lose the traction. And it's, hard, it's hard to, to, to kind of get that back. So to, to be community led, we need to understand that the pieces within the flywheel that matter. And I'm all, all for reducing and minim, minimizing things, but we have to be aware of the impact of, of the changes we make. But at the end of the day, I think like trying to kind of summarize all of this, it's it's hard and can we ever be truly community led when there's business needs i think we can i think it's really hard to to do it if you're in a larger company to create that change but at the same time i i really don't think we've even touched the surface of where we could be we hear about like the world of product, for example. And they, they, they love doing their research, right? They love understanding user needs. They do customer interviews. Um, most product people I speak to don't do that enough. And they admit behind the scenes that they wish they could do it more. But actually, community is almost best served to be a strong part of that. And that's only one angle that they could be a strong part of. They could, you know, community touches every point um, in the business. And I don't think we give ourselves enough credit for what that actually means and the value that that can bring to a business. Because when we have those touch points, when we see things going on, that's powerful. And the more we can do that, that's that. That to me is where the power of community is, and that to, that to me is what community led means: is to be able to have those touch points, to to have that goal of having those touch points, and then to be to be able to influence or you know contribute to the business because you know things that essentially like the the rest of the business don't know because no one else talks to the people like we do. And that's that, food, food for thought. So much, Rosie. Uh, super enlightening question for you. What are some low hanging fruit options for becoming community led? Where would you really start at the start? One, two, three things. Low hanging fruit. I guess it um, it depends, like how big the company is potentially. Mm -hmm. um, lower hanging fruit. I I like to hang out um, with people. I like to observe. I think yeah. like being a fly on the wall is um, a huge thing. Um, almost like not assuming, but doing that research um, quietly. So that you can kind of get get an understanding of what the ecosystem looks like. I kind of um, it's not it's not low hanging fruit when you call it community discovery, but right. this, this is what I call community discovery. Is like you, you do the research around the community, around the ecosystem. You understand what people are talking about. You understand what they, what they care about. Um, and maybe that's not low hanging fruit because it, it does. It can consume you, yeah. Um, but I think I think it's essential because if you don't do that, then you're just gonna do things that annoy people or do things <laughs> that bore people. Right, right. Or, you know, you know. We have a few minutes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go off script for a second and ask you. You know, if you're saying that 
your preference would be to observe and your preference is in being in person. I know that you recently held a kind of small mini retreat in, in England. Um, so what did you learn from doing that? Had you actually done it before with community professionals? Obviously FOMO for me, I believe that I am a Brit. So I was sad that I couldn't actually attend. Um, but yeah, like what happened for you from that? Yeah, that, that was fun. Just, you know, see, seeing people, talking to yeah. people. Hanging. Hanging. Um, being vulnerable, I think. Okay. Um, we had a bit of a plan, but not too much of a plan. Um, and what know, was the thinking behind that? Uh, I, I just like burnt out from talks. <laughs> okay. Not strategic, just exhausted. Got it. Yeah. And just like bringing back the balance of actually we want, we want to be with people. Right. We haven't had right. that. It's the first event that I've done since COVID. So, you know, just, I just wanted to hang. Yeah. Um, Are you going to do it again? I think so. All right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll cross the pond. Maybe <laughs> it'll happen this time. Um, Thank you so much, Rosie, for your time, your energy, and sharing your knowledge. People are also shouting you from the rooftops, so in the chat. So I don't know if you're able to see that, but when you can pop back over there.